We have Erin who came. Welcome, Erin. It's always great to see you. Yes, yeah, so scaling up the focus problem. Let me tell you a little bit about why that is definitely a topic for me that is very relevant. It is because I basically I own and operate with Andrea, for those of you who know her. Um, I own and operate a healthcare marketing and public relations agency. And basically, over the past six months, what we have tried very, very intentionally is to get to have our sales cross one million dollars uh, in one year. So in the past year, we have generated close to 700,000 and now we want to get to $1 million. It's definitely possible if you ask me if I would have ever guessed that that could be anywhere in the realm of the possibilities, I would have told you there's no way that can happen. But my dear friends, the journey is sometimes a very unexpected one. And if you fall in love with something that you happen to be good at doing, it might just happen for you as well. Now, what was the case for me is that I started as a freelancer in 2015, a jack of all trades. I was very good at doing so many different things. I was trained at as a web developer. I was good at copywriting. I was good with anything that had a court, anything related to IT. I was good at design. And, you know, when you are a jack of all trades, that can be a blessing for sure as a freelancer when you start out in your business. But as you grow and as you have to scale, it actually is quite challenging to undo the foundation of your jack-of-all-trades business and select something that you can now build a team around to scale, build operations around it, and then really also allow yourself to remove yourself from the business so that you can work more on your business and less in your business. If anything that I said so far resonates with you, uh, please give me a thumbs up. If anything I mentioned is a case in your life, I see Michelle and Aaron, they definitely have that problem as well. So what what am I? Actually, I have some very interesting statistic. Jeff as well gives me a thumbs up. Thank you. I have some very interesting statistics that I want to share with you. And um, it's the following. Let me just make sure I can open the correct window here. Um, and oh, here it is. So we have in the United States 28 million firms 28 million firms and 96 percent of those 28 million firms generate under one million dollars 96 percent of those 28 million firms generate under one million dollars in a year and then the next step up, more than $1 million in a year, 4%. 4% of those 28 million firms. Next step up, more than $10 million in a year, 0.4%. 0.4%. And then the absolute highest step, more than $50 million in a year, 17,000 firms, 17,000 firms. Now, let me ask you, just out of curiosity, are you surprised that the ones that are under $1 million make up 96%? If that surprises you, 
give me a thumbs up. If that is exactly what you would have expected, give me a heart. I'm very curious. If you, uh, okay, so Michelle is surprised. Is anyone here said, well, I expected that to be the case. Give me a heart. Okay. So Constance is surprised as well. Now, what I see in this graphic that I have in front of me, and that, by the way, is part I was given that um, in a training. I'm part of a group called Entrepreneurs Organization. And the whole purpose of this group is to get you to break $1 million. It's an invitation-only thing. You have It's basically an accelerator program, and I'm part of it. And what they are showing us is that for each tier to move into the next one, there is a so-called valley of death. They call it valley of death. What that means is that you're doing fine in your business, you know, you're making 700k a year, and then you need to get to a million, you need to cross a million. And in, do- in order for that to happen, there is a dip in income first. There is a dip in income first. That's the valley of death. And during that dip, you change things the way you do things in your business. You change things that allow you to cross that magical boundary of $1 million. And then what is interesting, to cross the next steps, more than a million, 10 millions, 50 millions, each time, shortly before you cross that boundary, you have that dip. And that dip is what we're talking about today. That dip that I am myself knee deep in is... Of course, it has a lot of different components. But for me, as someone who built my company uh, as a freelancer, jack of all trades, it is a big component of focus. So then the question is, what do you choose to focus on in your business? And what do you choose to let go of? And... Here's the big challenge. I'm not saying this is easy, but here's the big challenge. Maybe a lot of your services are actually doing quite okay. Maybe you are getting revenue from doing all different kinds of things. Like, for example, in my case, building websites, providing IT services, helping with marketing, doing uh, ad campaigns and whatnot. So maybe all of those things work well, right? And then you still have to put yourself in the situation where you say, well, I need to narrow down, I need to focus. Who here is in a similar situation where they are doing too many things and all of those things they do pretty okay and they're like, I don't really know what to let go of. Is anyone here in that same situation? Give me a thumbs up. Okay, Lakita is in, in that situation. Now, and Michelle. Okay, so I am in the process of doing that work myself. Okay, so I am not claiming that I have already achieved to do it. But I am working on it every morning. And I'm going to tell you what I'm doing. So wise mentors tell me, you pick what makes most money for you right now, criteria number one. Number two is you pick something that is easily scalable because there are processes that you can write down and repeat easily without you having to be always involved. Number two. Number three is it is... In the, you know, it is possible to scale that with reasonable investments, right? So hopefully you don't have to purchase another building. Hopefully you don't have to purchase super expensive equipment. If you have the choice, go with the leanest thing that you can scale. 
Now, sometimes you don't have the choice, right? But I do have the choice. Uh, and then, of course, the fourth one is super important as well. And that is, is the future accommodating for what you are choosing to scale? Is the future accommodating for what you are choosing to scale? And this is a very important one. I want everyone in the room here to think very, very well about this aspect because welcome to stage Andrea this is my COO partner in life and business by the way so welcome to the stage um, and I uh, I know that AI has changed the world fundamentally it is definitely a conversation for another day I don't want to go in it too too much but I can tell you you might be making good money with something today that by the end of the year, there will be no more money in it because what you are doing might have become commoditized, right? Might have to uh, become commoditized. And I'm not saying that you can't operate uh, in that lane, but what I am saying is that you need to find a, time, a, a way where you leverage uh, the new technologies AI you know whether you like AI or not it is our reality and you need to find a way where you leverage that in a way where you can um, continue doing what you are doing uh, in a different way maybe very likely it will have to do with leveraging that technology to be quicker more efficient more creative faster I guess that's the same as quicker um, and maybe you uh, you transition from doing it to teaching others how to do it with AI. I don't know there are so many opportunities, but this is ba essentially what you have to pick. These set of criteria. Uh, this is you have to take something and run with it. Now, once you have uh, picked your area your field that makes you all the money that is easy to scale where there's future in it where you have people that you can train on it once you have that now you need to focus on basically you identify the different roles needed in getting it done that is what Andrea and I sit together every morning we have chosen for us by the way if you're curious we have chosen for us that that thing that we want to focus on and become very strong in is helping busy companies and CEOs create a brand online. And we have identified several, there's several roles. There's like interviewers, there's video editors, there's copywriters, there's social media schedulers. Um, and then also there's podcast creators, just, you know, not to go too far, too deep into what we do. But we have identified these roles. Now we need to attach a very specific, repeatable step-by-step -step checklist system to each role so that we have processes that are scalable. Very, very important. Then the next step is you now need to go and have make sure that your brand focuses heavily around that thing that you want to push and scale. Uh, because everything else in your company and we do so much, as I mentioned, you know, we, we have a whole hosting company attached to it. Everything else, you know, will feed off of that one main thing that you push. Because I have noticed when people are happy with what your company is providing for them, uh, it's it, basically your services spread like vi <laughs> wild. <laughs> Andrea will love this. My mispronunciation of the W <laughs> spread like wildfire within your clients. It's just something that very naturally happens. They love. <laughs> she thinks that's cute. Ah, Andrea. And this has to happen here while we are on a live. Ah, incredible. Anyway, so. Um, 
uh, your 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 good work, your expertise, your name, that your your ability to do work for your clients will spread like wildfire. Okay, but then there is another side of it, and that is that's an important thing, and that's kind of the final thought here before I invite people to participate in the conversation. Is it is you know you have to also maybe start. Um, discontinuing services that run perfectly well and where you still have a high demand for it, people keep coming and asking for you it. Uh, but you have to maybe start saying, you know, no, we we just can't do offer that anymore. Not because we are not good at it. Not because it's not an interesting market. Not because you don't want to pay us. But because we understand that it is not what we need to focus on to take our company to whatever that threshold is that you want to get over. And that is very, very difficult. It takes so much discipline. It takes so much um, gumption, too, because there's the fear of missing out. This, this valley of death that I mentioned is a scary one because you have to voluntarily take a dip in your revenue so that you can kind of regroup and then go for an attack where then the uh, upwards trend happens but this time it happens all in a focused way where most of the revenue stems for from a service that you now have streamlined and where you have processes in place and very important where you are not the only one doing it okay and by the way if you want to learn how to tell the world what it is that you focus on luckily we are very well set up to help you with that we have a challenge coming up Uh, at the end of the month, uh, so there's plenty of time to sign up for it. Uh, go to yougrow.com and sign up for it. It's a four-day free challenge. Um, you can click my face and go to the link under my bio. Um, Andrea, any? I know you came in at the middle of the conversation. Is there anything you want to add? And also, uh, before you start... Uh, people in the audience, get ready, raise your virtual hand, because we definitely want to hear you as well. Death is a creative opportunity to reinvent yourself. That's what Deepak Chopra says. So even though this is all metaphorical, nobody's nobody's going to perish. But I think, I don't, I, I, I am an affirmationist, so I can't help but be who I am. But just yesterday, Shankar and I had a wonderful experience in this spa called Float. It was a spontaneous gift. It's my love language. And thank you very much, Shankar. And while inside of this almost like capsule type spa where there's water, like it's an encapsulated pool, a tiny pool where just he and I were there and we're floating, there's music and lights and water and then suddenly the music cuts off you have uh what is it an eye mask on and you have your ear plugs in so that the salt water doesn't go in and this experience changes dynamically it's blackout lights are off music is off and there's a lot of time to think in that space and so i think of that because Death is a creative opportunity to reinvent yourself. What would happen if you have that opportunity in your business? How would you adjust, evolve, develop skills? I had a lot of time to think about these kinds of things as we embrace change and the progress that we have through life, you know, and, and the way that you do that is going to determine how much you achieve. So I do apologize because I was, um, having difficulties trying to get into LinkedIn. It was playing games with me. <laughs> so I just got it now, but I'm thinking about that just really, really stood out to me to not be afraid to take a leap. And sometimes we just need to let our old selves or our, even some of the services perish so that we can really do what is 
the best for our clients, the best for ourselves, reinvent ourselves in a way that is healthy and helps people, especially during this. Once again, it, it almost feels akin to COVID times when there's, you know, times of uncertainty, but uh, I'm going to I'm going to just let give you a chance to respond to that because, like I said, I did come in midway through I was trying to get in. I hope I bet you other people are trying to get into the room and they didn't try enough. So, oh really? Um, but thank you. Yeah, because I, I sent you a screenshot. It was not allowing me to enter the room. I had to go into Safari, et cetera, et cetera, uh, yada yada. Uh, so, okay. thank you all for being here. Happy you came. Happy you got here. And thank you for listening. Yes, thank you, Andrea. And indeed, thank you for all of you to grace us with, uh, with your presence because without you being here, it wouldn't work. And as I said, when I started the room, I hadn't had the chance to do a live event for a while, but it's so, get, so good to do this again. Um, yeah, Andrea talks about death being an opportunity to reinvent yourself. And I think that is exactly what the death, the valley of death that it represents in your revenue income stream. Um, just briefly before you cross that $1 million boundary, uh, you're going to go down a little bit, the valley of death. Embrace it. Now, don't go and burn down your company to the ground. <laughs> it is a 15% <laughs> decrease of income, right? It's not that you go like down to zero. No, no, no. Um, but yeah, well, do we have uh, anyone in the room who wants to uh, join the conversation? Maybe you have some thoughts you want to share? I did want to add one more thing. Okay. It's a creative opportunity. Mm -hmm. It's a creative opportunity to reinvent yourself. I think that's key. It's very key. That is yeah. absolutely key to adjusting and evolving and adapting. You don't do the same thing over and over again. And that's what entrepreneurs are innovative, creative, problem solving, looking for the gaps, doing the hard work. It's not always easy, but we're driven by innovation because we know, you know, that is what's going to work. We believe in ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. So I think that's important to add to just have that confidence in yourself, even if you don't, see, you know, think about all of the, um, I think about all of the, <laughs> the Steve Jobs and the Bill Gates and the Richard Branson's and the, um, all of the women, of course, but I'm just, I just finished watching an Apple keynote. You should watch it by the way. But there were times when they had pennies in their account and there were times when they switched gears or they pivoted in their business and they didn't necessarily see it or they saw it. Uh, like who is that? Um, Brian Smith of UGG. The mm -hmm. founder of and CEO of UGG. Well, he's no longer, but he's the founder yep. of the uh, of the boots that I always thought were Californian, but are actually Australian. And um, there was there was a time when he didn't. Do you know that? Do you want to tell that story really briefly? Um, yeah, I mean, we had just tell it because I'm not sure which one you are referring to. We had a whole well, the one where him. he lost his company, basically, or it looked like that was what was going to happen, but he kept on grinding and yeah, he basically he eventually it, it was a it was a situation where he had navigated himself into basically being an employee in his own company that he started, and he was just so down. I mean, he, he, it was a time where he become, he became paralyzed out of a depression, I would think. And for what seemed several weeks, he just couldn't move, couldn't get out of bed. And, uh, he was just one to not give up. And he understood at some point that branding actually was going to be the key to, um, get his, company his boot company into into the billions right and um i i forget what precisely but he somehow figured a way he figured out a way uh, for the surfers and all the people who enjoy the beach to see this ugg boot as something to keep their feet warm after they come out of the waves and that was not at all what he had envisioned for that boot Initially. That's powerful. <laughs> yeah. That's powerful. That is reinventing yourself. Mm -hmm. That is saying, okay, 
I see this is where this is going. I'm not going to stay confined to what I thought it should be, but I'm going to go with the direction of the market and what my clients are telling me, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And and you're right actually to to uh bring him up because it was it was definitely a a death for almost complete death for his entrepreneurial journey in his own company but then he managed to turn everything around um now i'm i'm going to get close to wrapping this up and i'm i'm going to leave you with two things that i can do for you i always want to be of help for people the first one is that the organization that i mentioned to you entrepreneurs organization it exists worldwide but you need to have an invitation to join and um, there is a minimum requirement that they will verify you need to be at least at the quarter million dollar mark to apply for that program uh, but if one of the people in the room are at that mark and they want to get into the program in their city for those of you who are interested in in very high quality in person networking and mentorship just um, drop me a message and I'll connect you with uh, the representative in your city uh, entrepreneurs organization there's plenty of great reference material online uh, research them uh, super super high quality organization and then the second um, aspect is a online challenge a four day linkedin challenge that we organize this month starting the 20th i think andrea is that correct um, yes. So you go to yougrow.club, y-o-u-grow.club, and then you uh, register there is for free. And we do that in collaboration with Sinead Moray's Growth Academy. A lot of you here in the room are very familiar with her. And um, she is a woman who walks her own talk, has over... 1 million uh, followers on LinkedIn and she uh, 100% knows what she's doing uh, because she has achieved it herself. So that is something that is also available to you. Uh, as for now, uh, thank you, Jeff, Christoph, Constance, Erin, Christina, Lakita, Dr. Geneva, Frank and Michelle for your valuable time here with us in this beautiful room. Um, I'm going to leave you with love light peace from san antonio texas and i will see you very very soon maybe even tomorrow for andrea's affirmations uh, at 7 a.m central time on her account <laughs>